post lectures on multiple linear regression. And uh, you know, in the last lecture, we have uh, uh, considered uh, one example on a multiple linear regression. Uh, there, uh, the model, uh, multiple linear regression model, has been fitted, and uh, the significance and uh, the usefulness of the of the multiple linear regression model has been uh, tested using the uh, global test. And also, uh, using the partial test, we have uh, uh, tested uh, the significance of, uh, say, for example, x1 in the presence of uh, x2. Uh, basically, the test statistic uh, we have used there is uh, t statistic. Uh, well, so this can be done uh, also using. Uh, the extra sum of square technique. So, I am going to talk uh, you know uh, about uh, how to test uh, the significance of uh, one regressor variable in the presence of other regressor, vari other regressor variables using uh, extra sum of square technique. Well, Well, so this one is, uh, you know, this one is usually uh, used uh, to test uh, for several parameters being zero, but uh, here I'm using uh, this technique to test uh, the simple hypothesis like uh, uh, H naught beta two equal to zero against the alternative hypothesis H one which says that beta 2 not equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, this one can be, I mean we already we have tested this hypothesis using the uh, T statistic, uh, but now we will be using you know extra sum, uh, sum of square technique to, to test this hypothesis. Well, so this hypothesis can also be written as you know H naught, the null hypothesis, y equal to beta one plus sorry beta naught plus beta one x one plus epsilon against the alternative hypothesis that is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. Okay, so, uh, whether it is enough to consider this model or it is necessary to consider the full model. So, this is basically the full model and uh, the null hypothesis says that uh, it is it's okay to go for the uh, restricted model. Well, so what we do in the extra sum of square technique is that uh, we compute uh, SS regression uh, for both the model like for first we compute the SS regression for the full model. And also, we compute the uh, value of the SS regression for the restricted model. So, uh, here is the restricted model. So, what is the what is the SS regression value when uh, there is only one regressor in the model, and what is the SS regression value when uh, when there are two regressor variables in the model. So, uh, for these two values, uh, I will recall my uh, previous class, uh, 
you know uh, this one is my ANOVA table in my previous class for the full model. This one is for the full model. Please refer my uh, last class. So, here the SS regression value is uh, 122 and the SS residual value is 68. So, I will copy these two values. SS regression is equal to 122 and also you know uh, SS residual for the full model is equal to 68. Okay. Now, I will uh, refer my uh, previous lecture uh, for the restricted model. So, here is the restricted model, I mean we have fitted this model uh, using only one regressor and here is the ANOVA table for my restricted model that model here is equal to is beta beta sorry y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon and here is the SS regression 116. Well, so SS regression for the uh, restricted model is equal to 116. Now, the difference you know uh, we know that uh, SS regression increases as, as the number of regressor variables increases. Uh, so, this is the SS regressor for the full model and this is the SS uh, regression for the restricted model. Now, the difference SS regression minus for the full model and SS regression for the restricted model is equal to Six. Okay, so this one is you know this is, this one is called the uh, extra sum of square due to beta two, or you can say that this is the extra sum of square. Uh, sum of square means it is extra regression sum of square due to uh, the uh, regressor x two because this one this SS regression is involving both x one and x two and this SS regression is involving only x 1. So, the difference is the SS regression due to x 2. Now, uh, the F statistic for this extra sum of square technique is you know SS regression for the full model minus SS regression for the restricted model by the degree of freedom. Here the degree of freedom of this one is only 1 because here beta 2 is not a vector, it is just only one uh, regression coefficient and it corresponds to x 2. So, f is this by SS residual for the full model by the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is equal to 8 if you can you can refer my previous class. Well, so this uh, is equal to 6 by this is nothing but MS residual which is equal to 8.5 which is equal to 0.7. Okay. And we know that this f uh, statistic follows f distribution uh, with degree of freedom 1 and 8. So, what we do is that we uh, 
compare the observed value of f which is equal to 0 0.7 with the tabulated value of f 0 0.0518 the value of this one is 5.32. So, the observed value is less than the tabulated value that means, uh, the conclusion is that the hypothesis H naught is accepted. So, the meaning of this one is that you know uh, that uh, that we accept the hypothesis that beta 2 equal to 0. The meaning of this one is uh, the regressive variable x 2 is not significant in the presence of x 1 in the model. So, basically we got the same result, uh, I mean uh, we concluded the same uh, thing in using the t test also. Uh, so, this is another way to you know this is another way to uh, uh, do the same testing, this is you know uh, using the extra sum of square technique. Well, uh, also just I want to uh, mention here is that the if you use the t, t statistic, uh, then the t statistic value is equal to minus 0 0.83. So, here you can check that that t square value is equal to is almost uh, you know same equal to and this is you know in general this is true. So, whether you go whether you go for the t test or you use the extra sum of square method to test this hypothesis uh, you will be getting the same result. Well, uh, next uh, basically okay, uh, the content of uh, today's lecture is uh, you know we will be talking about uh, confidence interval on uh, regression coefficients. Also the confidence interval on mean response and uh, once the model has been fitted you know it is very important uh, you know one important issue is to predict uh, prediction of new observation uh, for a, a given value of uh, regressive variable. Well, so next uh, we uh, talk about confidence interval, intervals on regression coefficients. Okay. So, here uh, the regression coefficient is uh, beta which is a vector beta naught, beta 1 up to beta k minus 1 right and we want to find you know uh, the confidence interval for beta i uh, for any i. Well, what we know is that uh, to find uh, the confidence interval uh, first we need to have the point uh, estimator of beta. Uh, we know that beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y this is an unbiased estimator of beta. So, basically this one is an uh, is a point estimator okay. and also we know that the variance of beta hat is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse. Now, from here 
we can say that beta i hat, so I am talking about the ith regression coefficient, this follows normal distribution with mean beta i and the variance sigma square x prime x inverse i i f. So, this one is you know this notation uh, we have used several times, this is the i i th element in x prime x inverse. Okay. Now, from here I can write beta i hat minus beta i root over, I am replacing this sigma square by m s residual x prime x inverse i i, this random variable follows t distribution with uh, degree of freedom n minus k, because we have k minus 1 regressor. Well, then obviously, you know, uh, we can say that the beta i hat minus beta i by this quantity m s residual x prime x inverse i i th element of this, the absolute value of this one is less than or equal to t alpha by 2 n minus k, this has probability equal to 1 minus alpha. So, if you choose uh, you know alpha equal to 0 0.05, then this random variable is uh, absolute value of this random variable is less than t alpha by 2 n minus k is 0.95. So, from here uh, we get uh, 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the parameter for the parameter b i is you know uh, you can get b i is in between b i hat plus t alpha by 2 n minus k m s residual x prime x inverse i i and similarly the lower bound is beta i hat minus t alpha by 2 n minus k into m s residual x prime x inverse i i. Okay, so, this is uh, yeah, the 95 percent uh, confidence interval for the ith regressor when alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Similarly, you can get uh, similar confidence interval for the uh, other regressor coefficient from for the other coefficients also. Okay. Uh, so, next uh, we will be talking about uh, confidence interval on mean response at a particular point C 
say x naught is equal to 1, x naught 1, x naught 2, x naught k minus 1. Okay. Well, so uh, what we want is that we want uh, the expected response value at this point. So, these are the this is the value of first regressor, second regressor and the kth regressor. So, at this point uh, we are looking for the expected response value. Okay. So, what we want to uh, estimate first is that we want to estimate the expected so, we, we need uh, we are looking for the confidence interval for this expected value or mean response at the point x naught. Okay. So, the, the usual technique you know uh, to find the confidence interval for this one first you have to uh, look for uh, the point estimation of this one. Well, what is this quantity? This quantity is nothing but uh, or this is nothing but uh, x naught beta. Okay. So, x naught is a 1 cross k vector and beta is a k cross 1 vector. Right? Well, uh, we know that an unbiased estimator and unbiased estimator of this expected response at the point x naught is. So, the unbiased estimator of this one is nothing but x naught beta hat is uh, x naught beta hat. Okay and we call it uh, say y hat, y naught hat. Okay. So, this one is an unbiased estimator of this quantity because beta hat is an unbiased estimator of beta. Okay. So, you can prove that you know expected value of x naught beta hat is equal to x naught expectation of beta hat which is equal to x naught beta and the variance of next we compute the variance of the unbiased estimator y naught hat uh, which is equal to the variance of x naught beta hat right now this variance is equal to x naught the variance of beta hat into x naught prime well so this one is nothing but we know the variance of beta hat is equal to uh, sigma square x prime x inverse x naught prime well, so from here uh, I can say see uh, my unbiased estimator y naught hat has expectation this and variance this. So, I can say that y naught hat minus x naught beta you know this by x naught m s residual I am just replacing sigma square by m s residual x prime x inverse x naught prime minus 
this quantity or this random variable it follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus k right so from here you know using this uh, uh, i can give now the uh, 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the expected response. This is the expected response. So, I can get the uh, confidence interval for this uh, expected response now. So, therefore, you know 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval on mean response at the point x naught is uh, x naught beta hat which is nothing but uh, y naught hat plus t alpha by 2 n minus k into m s residual x naught x prime x inverse x naught prime. So, this is the upper bound of the interval and the lower bound uh, is obtained by just replacing the plus sign by the by minus. So, this one is you know basically the confidence interval for the expected response at the point x equal to x naught. Well, so next uh, we will be talking about uh, prediction of uh, new observation. Well, so th this is a, a very important uh, uh, aspect uh, because you know once you have the uh, fitted model, uh, that uh, the fitted model, if it is a significant one, then that model can be used. Uh, the regression model can be used to predict uh, new observations, corresponds to a uh, particular value of the response variables. Well, so here. Uh, what we want is that we want to uh, predict uh, the value new observation at the point at say x naught equal to 1, x naught 1, x naught k minus 1. Well, so, this one is bit I mean uh, for simple linear regression also we had the same sort of uh, um, problem. Uh, the difference between the expected response and the new observation at the point x naught is you know expected response at the point expected response at the point x naught is nothing but x naught beta but the observation here here what we are looking for is that we you know we are uh, trying to predict the future observation why not at the point x equal to x naught i mean when x naught means it's uh, for the given values of the regressive variable well so here we are trying to estimate why not this y naught is according to the model this y naught is nothing but x naught sorry x naught beta plus epsilon. So, in the previous case 
we try to estimate this con uh, this expected response and here we are trying to predict the value of this one. Okay, so, this is the dif difference, but uh, the starting point will be the same. Uh, we will start uh, with a point estimation or point estimator of this one. So, a point estimator of the future observation y not at the point x not is we again we call it y not hat which is equal to x not beta hat. Well, so you see the difference here you know we are starting with the same point estimator. So, this point point estimator we have used to estimate the expected response. Well, but now this point estimator is not an unbiased estimator of this thing, okay, but because we have the epsilon term here. So, that is why we define a new random variable psi which is equal to y not hat the same strategy as the simple linear regression model y not hat minus y not and the expected value of this random variable is equal to 0. This is not difficult to check because expectation of this is equal to 0 and the variance of this one you can check that variance of this one is variance of psi is equal to the variance of y not hat minus y not which is equal to sigma square 1 plus x not x prime x inverse x not prime. Let me explain see uh, the first term is sigma square which is uh, basically the variance of y naught and the second term is the variance of y naught hat. We know why it is so and these two are independent because this is a new observation and this y naught hat you know it consists of the previous observations the given observations y 1, y 2, y n and this one is an independent observation future observation right. Uh, so, from here uh, we can say that y not hat minus y not by m s residual 1 plus x not x prime x inverse x not prime. So, I just replace sigma square by m s residual. So, this random variable follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus k right. And from here from the distribution of this uh, random variable, we can get the uh, prediction interval, we call it prediction ok, uh, the same thing uh, confidence interval or prediction inter interval for, for y naught ok. So, thus, thus 100 into 1 minus alpha percent prediction interval for y naught is equal to x naught beta hat. So, this is nothing but y naught hat plus minus t alpha by 2 n minus k into x 
M S residual 1 plus x naught x prime x inverse x naught prime right well so this is how we get the uh, uh, prediction interval for uh, for a future observation now just uh, give uh, one example to illustrate uh, uh, this uh, confidence interval or prediction interval let me consider the same example uh, as in my last class and here i want to consider the problem that you know you find the variance of the predicted value of y for the point x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 5 okay so if you can recall my uh, last example there we had uh, two regressors x1 x2 and y now what uh, this problem says is that you know you find uh, the variance of predicted value of y for when x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 5. So, here my x0 is what I said x0 is you know 1, x0 1, x0 2. So, this one is nothing but 1, 3, 5, this is my x0. Right? Now, uh, what is the point estimation of estimator of y? The point estimator of y of y, call it y naught hat, which is nothing but x naught beta hat. And what we want here is that we want a variance of this point estimator. So, the variance of y naught hat is equal to x naught, the variance of beta hat which is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse x naught prime right uh, now to estimate you know uh, we cannot compute the variance because sigma square is not known so we have to replace this sigma square by ms residual so sigma square is equal to 8.5 because ms residual value is equal to 8.5 now my sig x naught is you know this is a scalar quantity now, my x naught is 1, 3, 5 and uh, you know that x prime x is x prime x inverse which is equal to uh, 4.37 minus 0.849, please refer my last lecture minus point four zero eight six zero point one six nine point zero eight two two point zero four two two into 
one three five. You know, just I am giving this example so that you know, just to illustrate, it, just to illustrate whatever uh, the theory I just explained. And from here, you know, it's not now dif not difficult to check that this this so this is you know, this is one cross three, this one is three cross three, and three cross one. So ultimately, the value of this one is going to be one point nine five. Okay. So, this is the estimated variance of the predicted value of y at this point and once you have this variance you can you can find the confidence interval or prediction interval very easily. Okay. So, that is all uh, regarding the uh, confidence uh, interval or prediction in interval uh, in multiple linear regression. Uh, next, uh, I have some time, so uh, I want to solve one problem from uh, simple linear regression. Uh, this will, uh, I hope, this will help you to understand, you know, more uh, on on degree of freedom, how to calculate degree of freedom. Okay, so uh, consider this problem from the simple linear regression, from the simple linear regression. Well, Well, so the model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon as usual. Here, we say that beta naught is known. So, this is the only difference. Okay. So, you really you know uh, do not need to estimate beta naught beta, because you know beta naught value is given. So, only thing you need to do is that you know you, you need to estimate the value of the uh, slope that is you know beta 1. So, the pro first problem it says that uh, find least, least square estimator of beta 1 for this model. Well, uh, you know, so you need to understand that uh, of course, you know that you know to estimate or to find the least square estimator of beta 1, you need to, uh, I mean that will be uh, obtained by minimizing the SS residual. So, uh, you assume that the fitted model is you know y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 hat x plus its x. Okay. So, uh, suppose your fitted model, the fitted model is y hat which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 hat x. So, I am not putting c, uh, I did not put beta 1 hat because beta sorry beta naught hat because beta naught is known. Well, so my E i is equal to y i minus y i hat. So, here it is y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 hat x i. This is my ith residual. Now, s s residual, residual sum of square which is equal to sum e i square 1 to n, this is going to be y i minus beta naught plus beta 1 hat x i 
square. Well, so the least square estimate uh, of beta 1 can be obtained by minimizing the SS residual and here you have only one unknown parameter. So, you just uh, differentiate SS residual with respect to beta 1 hat and this equal to 0 will give you the normal equation. So, the normal equation is y i minus beta naught plus beta 1 hat x i which is basically E i into x i equal to 0. So, here you will get only one normal equation because there is only one unknown parameter and solving this uh, normal equation you will get the estimator of beta 1 hat. So, from here uh, we get uh, beta 1 hat is equal to summation y i minus beta naught x i by summation x i square right. So, this is the this is the least square estimator of beta 1 hat ok. So, I mean what uh, I want to say is that you know you here you do not need to differentiate with respect to beta naught uh, because uh, because beta naught is is uh, known. So, you do not need to estimate that ok. So, the next problem is you know find uh, problem b it says that find 100 into 1 minus alpha uh, confidence interval for beta 1 hat. Okay. So, to uh, find this one we need to sorry confidence interval for beta 1 it is not beta 1 hat ok. Find uh, 100 into 1 minus alpha percent uh, confidence interval for beta 1 o ok. So, we know that unbiased is ok uh, we do not know whether it. So, uh, uh, we will start from the least square estimator of beta 1 that is beta 1 hat which is equal to summation y i minus beta naught x i by summation x i square. Well, so this is a point estimator of beta 1. Now, we will check what is the expected value of this beta 1 hat. Beta 1 hat is equal to um, you put uh, what is y i? y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon. Okay. So, if you put uh, this will be replaced by beta 1 x i plus epsilon i into x i by summation x i square and the expected value of this one. Okay. So, here you can check that you know the second term is 0 because expected value of epsilon i is equal to 0. So, this is going to be beta 1 into summation x i square by summation x i square. So, it is an unbiased estimator of beta 1 and uh, also you can check that the variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma square by summation x i square right. So, from uh, these two I can write you know beta 1 hat minus beta 1 
by if I replace this sigma square by ms residual by ms residual sum over x i square is uh, this follows t distribution with degree of freedom. Yeah, so the here is the uh, here I want to discuss a little bit. It is degree of freedom n minus one because uh, there are because the degree of freedom of SS residual is n minus one. Why? Uh, SS residual is summation e i square i equal to one to n and uh, you have the freedom of choosing n minus 1 e i's uh, and the last one the nth one uh, has to be chosen in such a way there is such that it satisfy the constant that e i x i equal to 0. So, here you have to note that you know in there is only one constraint on e i. So, that is why you are losing the degree of freedom by 1 and thus the degree of freedom of resist residual is equal to n minus 1. It is not n minus 2 uh, in case of you know usual for the simple linear regression model uh, when both beta naught and beta 1 are unknown the degree of freedom for this one is n minus 2 because here since beta naught is no is beta naught is known we are differentiating with respect to only beta 1 and we get one normal equation which is nothing but e i x i equal to 0. So, there is uh, only one constraint on uh, on residuals. So, that is why the degree of freedom is n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, now I can write uh, 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for beta 1 is beta 1 hat I that just plus minus T alpha by 2 n minus 1 ms residual by summation x i square. Okay. So, uh, uh, that is all for uh, today. Uh, thank you very much.